Dead? I'm afraid he is. You kill him? Yes. I was aiming at his rifle, but my horse shied just as I pulled the trigger. In that case, I'll take this. We don't hanker much for killings in this basin. For well, just a minute. Save your breath. The sheriff will listen to you. Mister, you don't understand. Understand what? I shot at this man to save your life. My life? What do you mean? He had a bead on you down on the road. He was aiming to kill you. Know him? Yeah, well enough to have fired him off my ranch yesterday for stealing money out of the bunkhouse. As a matter of fact, he's the reason I was riding so hard for home just now. What do you mean? Well, I heard in town that he was liquored up and threatened to cut some fences on my ranch. I was going out to post guards. He won't give you any trouble now. No, thanks to you. Mr. I owe you a lot for saving my neck just now. My name is Ryder, Red Ryder. My aunt and I own Painted Valley. It's a spread about five miles down the road here. I'm Steve Stevenson. I was riding in from Indian Gap. <laughs> Just broken up camp here when I spotted this buzzard. Not a second too soon, either. What brought you over this way? Lack of a job, mostly. I was hoping to find one in this basin. Well, you got one now. His job's still open. It's yours if you want it. Want it? Mister, you got yourself a hand. Good. Let's ride on into Painted Valley. I'll tell one of the boys to go in town and tell the sheriff about him. Just send a wagon out for him. And if Steve hadn't been Johnny on the spot right then, I'd probably be laying out on that road someplace with a bullet in my back. Well, this was the pot shot, Red. I knowed that varmint was no good the minute I laid eyes on him. You know, I remember Wild Bill Hickok used to tell me. Wild Bill Hickok probably used to tell you to shut up. He never did. He never did what? Tell me to shut up. Well, I am. You're what? Telling you to shut up. Now listen. Yes, ma'am. Young fellow, did I understand Red to say that you was from Indian Gap? That's right, ma'am. Funny thing, I used to know a man from Indian Gap named of Stevenson, Miles Stevenson. Any relation? He was my father. Was? Yes. Dad was murdered about two months ago. Murdered? I'm sorry to hear that. Did they catch the killer? Catch the killer? No, as a matter of fact, it was made to look like suicide. They found Dad in the living room of our ranch house with his rifle next to him on the floor. His cleaning rod and rag on the table. The sheriff just took it for granted that Dad had killed himself in a fit of depression while cleaning his gun. What makes you so sure he didn't? He'd cleaned that same gun the day before and hadn't fired it. Yeah, that is peculiar. 
You know, I've got an idea, though. You're not telling us the whole story. That you have another suspicion. Did your dad have any enemies? Anybody who'd like to see him out of the way for any reason? I was getting to that. If you knew dad, you, you knew that he was quite a gambler. He sure was. He'd bet on anything. Well, that's what started it. I was supposed to go back to college in a couple of weeks and finish my last year and get my degree. This particular morning, Dad seemed depressed. He was looking over his books as I came in from the barn. What's troubling you, Dad? Sit down, son. I want to talk to you. What is it? What's wrong? I'd rather cut off my right arm than tell you this, Stevie. But I can't afford to send you back to school this fall. Oh, but, Dad, I... Let me finish, son. As you know, we've had a pretty hard year. And I had to mortgage this place to the hill. And I have no additional source of money at all. Well, that's not so bad. I've had about all the education I could absorb anyway. Besides, I'd just soon stay here and help out. Be one less hand to pay. Thanks, son. But I know you're not saying what's in your heart. You're just as disappointed as I am. Sure, I was disappointed, but I didn't want Dad to know about it. So for the next few days, I did my best to cheer him up. Just as I thought he'd reconcile himself to the fact that I was staying, I rode up to the ranch house and saw a strange horse at the hitch rack. I dismounted, went into the house to see who our visitor was. Hello, Dad. See, my boy, I'm glad you got home before Mr. Palmer left. This is my son. Mighty proud to make your acquaintance. Pleased to meet you, sir. Well, I guess everything's satisfactory, Mr. Stevenson, so I'll be on my way. Right. Everything is fine. I'll see you in town tomorrow. Good. See you later. Well, son, it looks like our troubles are over. What do you mean, Dad? Why, who is this Palmer? Mr. Palmer is a prize fight promoter. When he got in town, he heard that our foreman, Mike Edwards, is the local undefeated champion. What's that got to do with us? Well, he and I have arranged a prize fight. Between Mike and a boxer that he manages who will be in town tomorrow. Where do we fit into this? Let me finish. Since the fight was announced in town yesterday, the folks have all gone hog wild betting on Mike. Dad, who's covering those bets? Who, who else but Charlie Dorgan? Yeah, he owns that uh, gambling palace. Yeah? I've heard he's never run a straight game in his life. Well, now, this is going to be straight all right. Mr. Palmer's assured me of that. Oh, sure. It's all right if we win. What if we lose? Don't worry, son. We won't lose. We did lose, and pretty badly. Then what happened? For the first time in his life, Dad felt he'd been cheated. We had 30 days to get off the ranch. Dad decided to do some investigating. You find anything? He must have. He never got a chance to tell anybody. Next morning, he was discovered dead. By whom? Through an odd coincidence, Mr. Palmer had come over to say goodbye. He was the one that found Dad. The sheriff just concluded it was suicide? Right. He even thought up a motive. Well, that was handy. What was the motive? He figured Dad was ashamed because all the neighbors had lost so much betting on a fight that he'd arranged. Why, Miles Stevenson had too much guts to take the easy way out. Thanks, ma'am. Nice to hear someone talk that way about Dad. But if I ever run across Mark Palmer, I'll gun him down so fast. Wait a minute now, Steve. You've already got one notch on your gun today. Say, speaking of that, I guess we ought to ride in town and see the sheriff. He'd probably like a first-hand account of what went on out there this morning. Say, that's a good idea, Red. Say, do you mind if Little Beaver and me tag along? I am plumb out of licorice. Not a bit. Come on. <laughs> we'll see you later, Duchess. Okay. Mm -hmm. shooting is. Let's ride over and see. You wait here with Little Beaver. Buckskin and I'll go find out. Thank <laughs> you. 
Fine, driver. A little shaken up, though. Can we get out and stretch our legs for a minute? Oh, sure, sure. I picked up a little time on my run this morning, Red, of those umbers on my tail. Well, that was a mighty close call. Are you gentlemen our benefactors? Well, we... <laughs> well, I don't know what that word means. But if it means that we saved your skins, well, I reckon we're, we're guilty. Buckskin, behave yourself. In that case, may I thank you for myself and my fellow passengers? Yeah, me too, Red. I'm kind of payload today, about 5,000 in gold. 5,000? Say, do you mind if I can just run my fingers through that? Oh, no, not with the holes you got in those gloves. You better get rolling, Ernie. We'll follow you into town as soon as Little Beaver gets here. Right, Red, and thanks again. Load up, everybody. Hey, Daddy, come now. Well, he looks all right, don't he? That's more than I can say for the two Jaspers you dropped back there. They never knew what hit them. Well, in that case, I reckon the sheriff will have to fetch out two wagons to pick them up. <laughs> Buckskin, sometimes you can be funny as a crutch. Well, uh, much obliged, Red. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's get riding. I don't want that coach to get too far ahead of us. Close, eh, Red? Yeah, it was, Ernie. We'll report this to the sheriff for you. We're going on over there anyway. All right, Red, and thanks again. Well, come on, let's go. Hey, just a second, Red. Let's, let's wait for Steve. Where did he go? I don't know. I, I reckon he spotted that pretty gal there in the coach. <laughs> All right, folks. Hello, Palmer. This is a pleasant surprise. Well, Stevenson. What are you doing in this town, running away from your father's reputation? Why, you dirty... Get out of my sight and stop molesting me or I'm going to have you arrested. You don't press me off that easy. <laughs> Get out of the way, young lady. I'm going to have to give this coward a thrashing. Just a minute, mister. It appears to me that the coward's on the wrong end of this thrashing. Just who asked you for your opinion? Nobody. There's your cane. Now be on your way. Just a minute. I was merely defending myself. He went for his gun. No, he didn't. I know he didn't. I was watching, too. Now, if you don't want any more trouble, get going. Now, just what was that all about? That was Mark Palmer. I guess I lost my head. Well, you almost got it knocked off, at any rate. You don't understand, Red. That was Mark Palmer, the fight promoter. Hold it, Steve. We'll talk about that in private. 
Right now, I'd like to thank this young lady, Miss... Evans. Sue Evans. I'd like to thank you, too, Miss Evans. I'm Steve Stevenson. This is Red Ryder. Pleased to meet you both. Thank you. You going to be in town long? Not too long. I've got a job here. Well, Steve, we better get on over to the sheriff's office. If you'll excuse us, Miss. By the way, Miss Evans, where are you going to be working? I was hoping you wouldn't ask me that. I'll be at the Silver Dollar Saloon. I'll be seeing you around. Sounds very interesting. Excuse me, Palmer. Come in. Are you Bart Osborne? Yes, miss, I am. Is there something I can do for you? I'm Sue Evans. I received your letter, and I'm reporting for work. Oh, fine. Charlie certainly wasn't exaggerating when he described you. Oh, by the way, this is Mr. Palmer, Miss Evans. We've met. This is the girl I was talking about. What a charming coincidence. I don't find it very charming, Mr. Palmer. If you want my opinion, Now, just a I... minute, Miss Evans. Mr. Palmer happens to be a friend of mine. I'll have to ask you to show him the proper respect. Now, if you'll wait outside, I'll see you in a few minutes. Well, I don't think we'll have any trouble with her. Who's this Charlie? What's he got to do with her? Well, that's an interesting story. But first, let's get our business out of the way. I'm not so sure now. I want to go through with this deal. Why not? What's wrong? Plenty. You led me to believe that you run this basin. But before I even get to town, a bunch of cutthroats try to hold up the stage I'm in, and I almost get my head blown off. I'm sorry, Palmer, but how did I know you were on that stage? You must have ways of stopping young hotheads like Stevenson from threatening people in town. That could have been a bad situation. I don't know the boy you're talking about, but the redhead I know well. He's sort of a local hero. Say, that gives me an idea. Are you sure your boy can't lose the fight? He's been all over the West, and he hasn't been beaten yet. He's won 35 straight fights. Well, he must be pretty good. Mm, just fair. But I have ways of making sure that he wins. What's this idea of yours? Well, Ryder is the best fighter in this basin. And if I can get a few of the local citizens interested, I might be able to force him to fight your man as representative of the town. Then when Bull beats him and uh, you collect your bets from his friends, they won't be his friends any longer, eh? <laughs> well, hip boost a hop field. Be with that says third straight game that you'll beat me. Uh, how do you do it? You read him your mind, Buckskin. No fooling? Of course he's fooling you, idiot. You ain't got no mind for him to read. Well, I... Listen, you old saddlebag. Wild Bill Hickok said that I had a mind of a... Well, somebody's door. Me get him, it. Hello, little beaver. Red home? Yes. Oh, hi, Sally. Oh, Sam, Jack, Ed, what brings you boys out this time of night? Well, uh, the boys and me wanted to have a little talk with you. Why, oh, is there anything wrong? No, nothing that I know of. But we want to make sure that nothing does go wrong. What's on your mind? Well, I don't know whether you heard it or not, but there's a prize fighter coming to town. Yeah, I was just reading about it in the news bulletin. Well, then you know all the details. We've been appointed a committee to get the best fighter in the basin to represent the town against this bull mason. So, naturally, you come to rest. That's right. And you've been chosen by the committee to do it. I knew Palmer was up to something when I saw him in town. Well, what do you say, Red? Uh, are you going to do it? This fellow's beaten everybody around the country. Be quite a feather in our cap if the representative of our town beat him. That's right, Red. And besides, everybody's willing to bet their shirts that you will do it. I hate to say this, but I'm going to turn you down. Why? Why? Well, I don't know anything about prize fighting. I'm a rough and tumble sort of a scrapper. I get in the ring with this old boy, and everybody's bet heavy on me, and I lose. Well, I'll feel pretty bad about it. Red, if you knew somebody that had boxed before, do you think you could train and manage him so he could beat Mason? Oh, I guess I could, but there's nobody in the basin with ring experience. Yes, there is. Who? Me. What? 
I was unofficial school champion for three years. Besides, nothing would give me greater pleasure than to beat the man who was partly responsible for Dad's death. Now, there's a good offer, Red. And you know, besides you, you can't turn Steve down. That's right. It's all right by the committee. What do you say, Red? Will you do it? Yeah, if you want to crack at him, I'll sure try with you. The committee says okay. I guess I don't have any choice. I give him all, Red. Good morning. You had breakfast yet? I never eat before 10. Have you heard the news? You mean about Ryder refusing to fight? I heard that last night. Well, what does it mean? It means that Ryder's smart. He won't stick his neck out. But it makes very little difference. Why is that? Who ever heard of the Stevenson kid before Ryder brought him to town? When he gets beaten, it'll be the same as if Ryder was in the ring. The only thing that worries me is I'm sure the betting won't be as heavy as I figured. Don't worry about the betting. When Bull arrives in town this afternoon, we have a routine that'll have the betters knocking each other down to put their money up. I hope so. I can't wait till after the fight to see Ryder's face. <laughs> Well, Red, what do you think? Well, I think Steve's in real good shape. I don't see any reason why he should have trouble handling Mason tomorrow morning. What's your hurry? Well, well, Red, I thought maybe you wanted to take a look at that other fighter when he arrived. He's due on the next stage in about a half hour. Hey, that could be interesting. Let's ride into town. You coming with us, Duchess? Sure, Red. Be with you in a minute. Yeah. Well, hair pants to hoop skirt. Ain't that just like a woman? Ready or not, she's never ready. The... <laughs> I, I didn't mean you, ma'am. I didn't mean you. <laughs> I did, too, mean her. <laughs> Why, that lazy woman? Ain't that right now? Look at, look at Beaver. Remember how we stood around when she was going to... The stage ought to be here any minute now. Yeah, it's going to be a little late, don't it? Well, I'll be good. Hey, uh, Beaver. Run over to the store and fetch me some licorice. You fetch me some licorice. Much obliged. Here's the stage now. He ought to be on it. Here, you. You insulted my wife. Are you going to apologize, or do I have to hit you? Go away. You bother me. How about the way you feel about it? See if this bothers you. Oh. Take it easy, Paul. Save your fighting for the ring. He's a pretty cut customer, ain't he? Yeah. Come on, then. You wait here. I won't be gone too long. No tussle with that big part. Thank you. 
Bernie, I just want to talk to your pastor. Well, go ahead. What do you want with us? I got a message for you. From? The boss. He wasn't very pleased with your performance in town. The boss? I don't know what you mean. Sure you do. Palmer wanted me to tell you to do better next time. That punch looked phony. It wasn't my fault. Mason went back too soon. I almost missed him. That's none of my business. I've told you what I suppose to do. Well, you tell Palmer if he isn't happy, you can get another boy. Driver! Yeah? Let's get going. All right. <laughs> Call you. What do you got? It's no good. Full house. Well, that little show of yours seems to be paying off. I don't think there'll be more than half a dozen people that won't have a bet on young Stevenson. I told you. Never fail. Once they see the little boy knock Bull down, they're all sure that he can't win. I haven't lost yet, have I, boss? Nope, and you never will lose if you keep playing ball with me. When's your friend Sampson gonna arrive? Sometime early tomorrow. What, give him enough time? He won't need time for this job. It'll be like shooting fish in a barrel. This is Sue Evans, Maya the Duchess. Hello, Duchess. Howdy, Sue. What brings you clear out here? I've come out to warn you. I think Osborne and Palmer are up to something. Oh, what do you mean? Well, they seem awfully sure that Mason's going to win. Too sure. What do you think they're planning? Well, I don't know, but I don't think Steve ought to go through with it. I can't back out now. If I don't show up tomorrow, Mason will win by default. All those people that bet on me will lose all their money. He's right, Sue. Of course, that doesn't mean that we can't be on the lookout for some sort of a trick. Good. Now I'd better head back to town before they miss me. I'll ride in with you. No, please don't. If Bart Osborne even suspects that At I'm not... At least I can walk out with you. <laughs> All right. Goodbye. Bye. What do you think? About what? About that girl. You think she's on the level? After all, she does work in the saloon, you know. Why, Red Rider, I always thought you was a pretty good judge of character. Well, now, if you used to ask my opinion, I wouldn't ask you anything. But I'll tell you, young fella, that there is a nice gal. And I'm sure that if she's working in the saloon, there's a pretty good reason for it. You still won't tell me why you can't quit that job? I wish I could, Steve. Maybe someday. I sure can't figure her out. Yeah, I know what you mean. But right now we got a little tougher job. You know, the information she brought out here wasn't news to me. Well, shotgun to shenanigans, Red. What do you mean? Well, that one punch knockdown when the stage came in didn't look right to me, so I decided to investigate a little. That being why you left us, Red Rider? Yeah, that's right. I followed the coach out of town when I was sure that I wasn't being followed. I stopped the stage and had a talk with the passengers. Well, out with it, Red. What did you find out? They're on the payroll of Mark Palmer in that fight with stage, just as I thought it was. Well, why, Red? What did they expect to accomplish? They're so sure they're going to win the fight, they want to cover every bet on you they can get. Why, then, dirty low... Hold guy. on now, Buckskin. Save your breath. i got work for you to do. Right now, Red? Yeah, right now. I want you to ride into town, keep your eyes and ears open, notice anything unusual that goes on in or around the saloon. Yeah, well, well, what then, Red? Then ride back here and let me know what you found out. I'll do it, Fred.
Palmer and Osborne going in and out of the office several times, huh? Yeah, that's right. But neither one of them seemed to be worried about the fight tomorrow. What about Mason? Did you see him? No, I didn't. But one of the boys was telling me that he's doing some mighty heavy training, some mighty heavy lifting. What kind of lifting? Well, he's lifting the bottle to the glass and then the glass to his mouth. <laughs> see, he's training on whiskey. Yeah, I know, but that's one of the things that worries me. Mason's in such bad shape, and yet Palmer and Osborne are so sure of winning that fight. What's the next move, Red? Well, I don't know. You go on back in town tomorrow, Buckskin, and keep on nosing around. You may stumble onto something yet that'll give us an idea of what they got up their sleeves. Right, Red. Well, I think we ought to all turn in. We got a big day ahead of us tomorrow. Yeah, and I'm tireder than a monkey in a grapevine. <laughs> Boy, that been sure feel good to me tonight. I'm swear to Maybe you stay out here and keep your eyes open. The rest of you boys, get yourselves a drink. I've got business with Osborne. Send word you want to see me? Yes, I have a proposition for you. This is Mr. Palmer. He handles Bull Mason. We almost met the other day. What do you mean, almost? Well, I was a passenger on that stagecoach you tried to hold up. Then maybe you can tell me who the hombre was that butted in. He got two of my boys. It was Red Ryder. He and that bearded monkey that travels with him heard the shooting and stepped in. But you won't have to worry about them stepping in this time. They're going to be occupied. Let's quit beating around the bush. You said you had a proposition. What well, is it? All right, I'll tell you, quickly. The 5,000 in gold you were after on the stage is still in town. We want to give you another crack at it. Of course, it'll be split three ways. Why should I split with anyone? Because we know where it is and the easiest way to get it. Now, will you play ball or should we get somebody else? Don't rush him, Bart. Give him time to think it over. I won't need time. Just tell me what your plans are. They sound all right to me. We'll have a deal. On a buckskin. I knew you couldn't trust him with anything important. Oh, don't condemn him yet, Duchess. He'll probably meet us at the corral. I wonder how much he heard. Uh, yeah. He's coming around now. Uh, All right, start talking. Uh, how did I get in here? Where am I? Who am I? You know where you are. How much did you hear out there? Oh, well, listen, you fellas. It's just like I told you. I don't know nothing. I don't never saw you before. 
I don't know how I got in here or who I am. Never mind that dummy business. You're going to start talking or do I have to beat it out of you? Hold it, Samson. I don't think you can make him talk. Because he's right. He doesn't know who he is. What do you mean? Well, I've seen exactly the same thing before. That blow on the head's given him amnesia. How do you know? You're no doctor. Well, you don't have to be to recognize the symptoms. We don't have to worry about him talking. Well, what do we do with him? Well, let him go. If he doesn't show up, someone might get suspicious. Come on, let's get down to the corral. himself out, then we can make a move. Right, Red. I'm kind of worried about Buckskin. Hey, little beaver, run into town, will you, and see if you can find him? You betcha. you at the corral. Uh, what corral? I don't know what you're talking about. Have you seen Red? Red who? What's the matter with you? Don't you know who I am? Well, worse than that, ma'am, I don't even know who I am. Although I know I got an awful headache. Buckskin. Red Ryder want him you right away. Who, who is he? This is Little Beaver. Mm. Something's wrong with him. Mm. He doesn't know me, and now he doesn't even know you. That's him funny. We take him here to Red Ryder. He fix him. Well, where, where are we going? <laughs> Sheriff, watch the guy. 
Get that left out there. Come on, toss him at that right. One, two. Come on, cross the right, cross the right, Steve. Come on, get moving there. of Bull Mason. What for, Redhead? You won't find any excuse in him. Well, I don't believe this boy was just knocked out with Sheriff. nothing. Sheriff! The stage office was just robbed. They headed east. Out of town. The stage office was just robbed. Let's form a posse. We might be able to head him off if we take Eagle Pass. You take care of Steve. I'll see you back at Painted Valley. All right, Red. There they are. Let's cut them off. Thank <laughs> you. 
Blodgett means nothing to you? Oh, uh, nary thing, nary thing. Well, of course you know that only another blow on the head will restore your memory. Oh, is that so? Yes. That's oh, look, wait a minute. Don't you, don't you hit me with that thing. Don't... Why not? I'm willing to do it in the interest of science. I can make it quick and almost painless. No, no, no. I wish I could remember whether you like me or not. Here come Red Rider down the road now. How'd you make out, Red? Well, we rounded up the gang and got back to gold. Anybody damn hurt? Yeah, the leader of the gang. The sheriff said his name was Duke Sampson. So that ornery barman finally got what he had coming to him. Did he talk? Well, he couldn't very well, seeing as how he's dead. How about you, old-timer? You got any memory back? Uh, oh, Chef, no. How's Steve? He's all right, Red. Just needs a little rest. That's a nasty bruise he's got on his jaw. Yeah, too nasty to have just come from bare knuckles. I'm sure that Mason had some in his fist when he hit him. But you can't prove a thing now. I know that. Well, I'm going to take Buckskin in town tomorrow to the doctor. I'll nose around a little land and see what I can find out. I'm afraid you ain't going to find too many people friendly towards you, Red. They bet pretty heavy on Steve. Yeah, I guess they did. Well, I'm going to see if I can do anything about getting them their money back. <laughs> You wait here, Buckskin. I want to go in the stage office a minute. Right, Reed. I want to have a little talk with you, Red. Howdy, Sam. I'm sorry about the way the fight went yesterday. Not half as sorry as you're going to be if you don't do something about this whispering campaign that's going on around this town. Oh, what do you mean? Part Osborne is circulating a report that if you wasn't yelling, you'd have fought Mason yourself. Sam, you know that's not the reason. Sure, I do. But the frame of mind the people are in around here, the only thing they can think about you is the worst. You want to know something? I got an idea that fight wasn't on the level. What do you mean? Well, in the first place, Steve was in too good condition to be knocked out that easily. Secondly, the hold up at the stage office here was too well timed. You think there's a connection? I'm pretty sure there is. Steve told me that almost the identical thing happened over at Indian Gap when Mason fought over there. Hold up? Hold up and two murders. Well, you had better do something and do it quick. Farmer and Mason are figuring on leaving town in an hour. Oh, they are? You're right. I guess I better be quick. Well, I'll go to the saloon right now and use the direct approach. I'll go with you. Here you are, Palmer. Your share of the money we won yesterday. $3,420. Not bad for a small town like this. Yeah, but there should have been 1,700 more if Samson's men hadn't been so sloppy. Well, it was worth it to me to have Ryder's reputation hurt the way it was. That doesn't make Mason and me any richer. Here you are, boy. Here's your share, 500. Thanks, boss. But don't you think I ought to... Get that money out of sight. Come in. Well, well, well. Look who's here. The former people's choice. <laughs> <laughs> 
If I was him, I'd be ashamed to show myself in town. <laughs> Go ahead, have yourselves a laugh. Because when I get finished, I got an idea you'll be laughing out of the other side of your face. What do you mean? I'm going to prove that fight was crooked. I don't think the stumble bum could win any fight that was on the level. Stumble bum? Why, I uh, tell you a pot. Why don't you try it? Take it easy, Paul. Don't lose your head. But he called me a stumble bum. That's right. What are you going to do about it? I'm glad you did that, because it gives me a reason to give you the beating of your life. Turn him loose. Just a minute, fellas. Red, I've got an idea. Butch in. Yeah? Go out and tell everybody in town that Red's going to fight Bull Mason. They want a chance to get their money back to be at the saloon right away. Well, I'll be diddly dad burn. That's a good idea. And what if I refuse to cover any bets on this fight? If you do refuse, I'll see to it that the folks of this town get annoyed at your saloon and start tearing it apart. But uh, my boy, he isn't in any condition to fight. He's in better condition right now than he will be after the fight. Get this over with quick. Here, take this. Say, uh, I sure wish I could remember whether you're a good fighter or not. Cause, see, I, I got two dollars bet on you. you what I got in my hand. I'll give it to you like this. Hey, Red, here's what he had in his hand. Piece of lead pipe. So that's what gave Steve that bruise. Sheriff, grab Osborne and Palmer. I'll take care of this one. piece of lead pipe. This is all your fault. You and that fighter are yours. Shut up. They can't do anything to us. This was just a barroom brawl. There aren't any rules governing that type of fight. Oh, they're not? We'll see about that after the sheriff locks you up in a cell. On what charge? Don't let him go, Red. You're drunk. What do you mean, Buckskin? Well, I don't know how I got in here. But I heard these two hombres planning with that varmint to try to hold up the stagecoach. What were they planning? Well, this afternoon, while Steve is fighting this feller Mason, they figured on holding up the stage office and then splitting the money three ways. This afternoon, what? That was yesterday, Buckskin, and the stage office was held up. Yesterday? There's your charge, Sheriff. Conspiracy to rob the stage office. Well, whoa, wait a minute. I, I might have lost last night, but I'll be diddly dad burned if I know what's become of this morning. At your age, Buckskin, you'll never miss him. No, oh, I suppose I'll... Now, just a minute now. <laughs> you had one, Tussle. Do you want another? <laughs> Go with 
the sheriff's office, Red. Is that correct? Wide open. First Osborne, then Palmer. I had a private conversation with Palmer. He admitted killing Dad. I kind of figured that one out for myself, knowing your dad like I did. While you boys was in town, me and Sue had a private little talk, too. I told the Duchess why I had to work for Bart Osborne. Oh, we'd figured that one out for ourselves. Your brother Charlie owed Osborne a big gambling debt. That's right. But now Charlie has a respectable job. They'd never let him relax with that gambling debt hanging over him. So I offered to pay it for him. Well, now that you're not working for Osborne any longer, I, I'd kind of like to offer you a job. I, uh, excuse me. Carry you? Of course I will, darling. Steve, congratulations. That's wonderful. Thanks, Red. I hope that's just wonderful. Well, let me shake your little hand. <laughs> You'd be mighty glad to, Steve. All right, you three. Let these kids alone. You ride into town with Sue. You can help her with her packing. Meantime, we got a lot of chores to do. <laughs> Be back here for supper, you two. We got a lot of celebrating to do. We sure will, Duchess. She's got herself a fine boy there. He's got himself a grand girl. Oh, see, Red, that reminds me. You know that magnesia I had? That wasn't very satisfying. You mean amnesia, Buck, Jim. Well, bullfrogs and toadstills. I, I don't I don't care what you call it, but I know anyway I had it, and I wasn't very happy. Oh, why not? Why, because I don't seem to remember a diddly dad burn thing that I've done. Well, I do. Oh, do you? I recall that when you had amnesia, you showed me a lot more respect. As a matter of fact, I'm seriously thinking of making sure that you get amnesia again. Now, wait a minute, oh, Duchess. You wouldn't hit a little Indian boy, would you now? Would you? <laughs> 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 Thank you.